Hi guys! If you're thinking about buying a traveler's notebook, here are some tips and tricks for you before you spend a lot of money and end up investing in something that you maybe you're not 100% happy with. Because it happens to all of us, and traveler's notebooks can be an investment because many of them are handmade. So let's hop right into it. The first thing I'm going to point out is that if you like planners with rings or notebook with rings, a traveler's notebook generally is known as a notebook that is held together with elastics. So right off the bat, if you prefer rings, don't get a traveler's notebook with elastics. They do make them with rings, and those are more traditional planners. But in general, traveler's notebooks are known for being um, bound by elastic, and then you put inserts in them. So first of all, if you know you like rings, don't invest in a traveler's notebook. Easy peasy. Next thing to consider, take a look at the notebooks or journals that you were drawn to prior to considering a traveler's notebook. So this is one that is a good representative of the size notebook that I was typically drawn to. And I don't like rings and I discovered that using this notebook. However, this notebook has a good size comparison. I generally tended to prefer a little bit smaller. This was larger than what I was used to, so I knew I needed something a little smaller than this. And when you compare the sizes to the traveler's notebook I ended up choosing, they're very close. So there are so many different sizes of traveler's notebooks. The first way to kind of narrow down the size for you is to think about the kind of journals you're drawn to, how they feel in your hand, how you feel about carrying them around. So I knew that this was just a little too big for me. I wasn't that happy carrying it around. I knew I needed something just a little bit smaller. And anything larger than this, which is a standard wide, also known as a Cahier in Moleskine, and also known as a number seven if you use Foxy Fix terminology, that would be the largest size I would be comfortable carrying. So the second step is take a look at the journals and notebooks you find yourself currently drawn to and use them to extrapolate the best size range for yourself. After you've done that, your next step is, and I really recommend taking the time to do this, make yourself some test inserts. Now, I used the Chic Sparrow website because she had the best explanation, I feel, of the various sizes that you can get for traveler's notebooks. And then what I did, I made three, and I can't find my third one, but I made three dummy inserts out of plain printer paper that I cut and folded, and I had printed out a dot grid inside them, and then I used them to test how I felt writing in them. And after writing in them both, Actually, after writing in all three, based on the size I extrapolated from my journal, I knew that I would be interested in either the Cahier, the Standard, or the B6 Slim. Immediately after making the insert, I had thought the B6 Slim might be the best for me. I knew instantly it was too small for what I need because I write a lot. This is a great size for other people. For me, it's just too small. So I knew after folding and cutting the first piece of paper that this was not the way for me to go, which was really great because, again, this is the one that I thought would be best for me. So I was immediately able to put that aside. The next two that I made was the narrow, the standard, or the number six in Foxy Fix Lingo, and then the cat here, which I no longer have. And I knew that those two would both work for me. Over time, I have found that I am more drawn to the standard size insert housed within a Cahier sized cover. And I also use normal sized covers if they fit a little more, but I like to have room to tuck my pen in without having the inserts come all the way to the edge. So that ended up being my preference. I never would have known that if I had not done this. And simply taking some on-hand computer paper, cutting it quickly and folding it and stapling it, and then test writing in it was a super fast, cheap, and easy way for me to figure out what I wanted before I spent hundreds of dollars on various notebooks trying to find the golden size for me. So that would be my third step recommendation. Do, if you ignore the other two, do not skip this one. Um, like I said, you may surprise yourself. I know I surprised myself. The fourth recommendation I have for you is choose samples if you're going to buy a leather notebook. The reason I say this is that everyone's computer is different. And the colors that I have received in various leathers that I have ordered have been so wildly different from what my screen shows 
that at this point, I refuse to order a notebook unless I have received a sample in advance. So I invested in some samples. Some of them come with notebooks that you order. Um, for example, I ordered from a Foxy Fix mystery sale, ended up liking neither of the leathers I received, and I um, buy, sell, traded them on a swap group on Facebook. But that was the first clue for me that I needed to invest in samples. And they're only $2 each if you're going through Foxy Fix. They're like $3 if you go through Shake Sparrow. And the Shake Sparrow samples are bigger. You can use them as coasters if you choose. So that's an added bonus for those. Oh, I forgot. I have another sample over here from Foxy Fix. So make sure you get a sample. They're like 2 bucks, maybe 3 more to ship. And granted, that may be $5 you don't want to spend. But that's a lot of money saved if you get a notebook whose leather does not look the way you're expecting. So for those who are curious... This Foxy Fix sample is the Boss Babe in Scarlet. I'm not sure what the formal name is for it. It is a gorgeous leather. At first I thought it was the Chocolate Cherry Sugar, but you can see it has a different texture compared to the sugar leather. This is the Grape Soda Sugar, I believe. And it's incredibly soft and it's got this beautiful red suede on the other side. This looks nothing like how I thought it looked on the website. This very much surprised me. Um, another two I was thinking about because I wanted a yellow traveler's notebook um, was the Lush Sunflower. And then I was also curious about the Lush Ballerina. And this was another one that surprised me because it's definitely more of a violet undertoned pink. And I don't like violet undertoned pinks. So I'm very glad that I ordered this sample in person first. Um, so that was the Lush Ballerina from Foxy Fix. This was the Foxy Fix Sunflower. And this was kind of like a green undertone on the suede in the back. It was very bright. And it's hard to tell on camera, but there's kind of a grayish green cast to this. And I knew immediately that that cast plus the texture of the leather, which is a beautiful leather, but it's not a texture I prefer, this was one that I was not going to invest in. So again, I would have spent $120 or however much it was ordering a Sunflower Lush because these are almost impossible to find on buy, sell, trade. And then I would have received it and been disappointed because it wasn't exactly the color I wanted. I also have a Foxy Fix Mochi. And this, or no, I'm sorry, this is the Matcha. And this one very much so surprised me. This looks almost like a, a dark tealish green on their website. And it is in reality a beautiful beautiful forest green. Look at that color on the back. I actually ended up ordering the sugar matcha after receiving this sample because I was so stunned at how gorgeous this was. So that took me by surprise. I never thought I would like this shade and it is stunning in person. Another sample I received, which this came with uh, one of my mystery sale orders because I actually do not like the color purple. No offense if you do. Everybody has their preference. Uh, I'm not a purple person. This one, I believe, is their sugar grape soda. And it's fine. I'm just not a purple person. So this is the sugar grape soda in case anyone's interested. Then I also received from them a coaster. I'm not sure what purple this is. I want to say it's one of the botanicals. It's um, Maybe it's orchid, but they made a coaster out of it, so that's been nice. I enjoy this as a coaster, so I've been using this as a coaster. I also ordered the Chic Sparrow Daisy sample. This is another one where I ordered the sample, and it looks completely different than how I thought it would look. And this was amazing to me because I thought the daisy would be bright yellow. And it's not. It is this beautiful mustard-toned leather. And that is exactly what I have been looking for in a yellow notebook. So I actually ordered a Deluxe Chic Sparrow in Daisy last night. The only thing I will say is I wish the inside, as you can see, has been um, finished and sealed. I do wish that it was a soft suede material the way Foxy Fix's leathers are. However, I... Love this color. I've been searching for this color since I became obsessed with Traveler's Notebooks. And I ordered this sample. I knew immediately this was the right color for me, and I ordered it. Versus spending, if I had ordered this full notebook and then ordered this full notebook, let's say I ordered this full notebook for 120 something wasn't the color I wanted. I'd have to buy, sell, trade it. Sometimes people don't like to pay the full price, even if you've never used it. So I would have taken a loss there, 
PayPal invoice fees, shipping, then I would have bought this one. And granted, that's another, this ended up being the one I wanted anyway, but the fact is I would have taken a chance. Let's say I was hoping for a brighter color. If I had just sorted this, I would have been out on my Chic Sparrow as well. So you can tell that the two leathers are very different. And this is why you order samples because everyone has their own preference. And when you compare leathers like this, and I'm not even talking about comparing the companies. If you compare leathers, you need to find what works for you. And you will not know that until you hold them in person in your hand. And that is incredibly important. The other reason why I say it's really important to order samples is I own a Zinni Dory Unicorn. It is one of my favorite faux leather traveler's notebooks that I have. And I ordered this beautiful color called Cinerous. And I had bought from the mystery sale on Foxy Fix. And I had received a sugar cookie card sleeve and I had been interested in the sugar cookie the sugar cookie color and I thought wow that looks a little different in person it's very similar to what their photos show but I thought oh my god that is almost an exact dupe my Zenny Dory Cinerous is almost an exact dupe for this sugar cookie and when I saw that it made me realize I don't need to order this because I already own this color and I don't order things just to have something of the brand because honestly this leather feels exactly like this faux leather and when I have a faux leather notebook I am much less worried about carrying it around and it getting damaged or it getting wet so even though this is faux leather I usually buy notebooks for their colors and for their textures and for me this feels the same it's the same color and I knew immediately upon receiving this um, technically it's a card holder, but it is a sample that I didn't need to invest in the sugar cookie because I already had something that was that color and that texture that I had wanted. So this is why it is so important to order samples in order to figure out what you want. Because if you don't do that, you're going to end up in a situation, I think almost everyone does, where you are surprised and not necessarily in a good way about the way that your notebook looks. And even if you order on Etsy, you can message sellers if they don't have samples listed and ask them, would you be willing to send me a sample because I would like to invest in a notebook, but I want to make sure that the leather is something that I would like. And most sellers will agree to send you a sample. They may make you a smaller listing and then you can order it that way. Because for a seller, if they sell you something and it's not exactly what you want, and then you message them and you're not happy, that's something that they then have to deal with. They may take a hit on that. They may have to send you a label to return it if they even allow returns, or that's going to end up with a bad review for them. And that's not something they want either. So most sellers will be happy to work with you and give you a sample. And then that is how, for example, you narrow down exactly what texture and colors of leathers you're interested in, which one may be the same as something you already have, but there was just a slight shade difference. And that will really help you determine how you should spend and invest your money. And then you can also find, if you're not willing to spend from the companies themselves on samples, you can get samples, um, like I'll probably end up listing some of these on a buy, sell, trade group. And I've seen other people list samples on the buy, sell, trade groups as well. And it's a great way and an inexpensive way to save your time and your money and you know your emotions because you invest a lot of emotion into these you order them you may custom make them and add things um, that you're hoping to see and then it arrives and it's almost heartbreaking because it may not be exactly what you were hoping for so if you're looking to start for uh, looking for a traveler's notebook those are my main tips first of all compare in sizes to journals that you're currently drawn to secondly Make yourself some inserts out of paper. Determine what is best for you, what you enjoy doing, what your favorite size is. Thirdly, or maybe fourthly at this point, order your samples. Make sure that you like the leather that you're buying. Make sure that you are happy with the color and the texture and the company. And then spend the money or then 
be patient and wait to get a good deal on the buy sell trade group. So those are my tips for you guys today. If you have any questions, feel free to message me and let me know. And I hope you all have a wonderful holiday season.